Hello and welcome to day 193 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Areleba. Let's get started. Let us say a word of prayer, dear Heavenly Father, as we come before you on this 193rd day of our journey through your word. We are filled with gratitude for the constant guidance and profound insights you provide. Your word is a light to our path and a source of unending wisdom. Lord, we ask that you would open our hearts and minds as we delve into the scriptures today. May your Holy Spirit guide us into all truth, helping us to understand and absorb the teachings you have for us. Help us to see your character more clearly through your words and to reflect your love and righteousness in our lives. We pray that our reading today would not only deepen our knowledge, but also strengthen our faith. May the lessons we learn Inspire us to live out your commandments with greater commitment and to serve those around us with the love and kindness you have shown us. Grant us the wisdom to apply these biblical truths to our everyday lives, transforming us into more faithful followers of Christ. May our study be a meaningful time of growth and reflection and reaching our walk with you. Bless this time of reading, Lord and make it fruitful. May it bring us closer to you and equip us to face the challenges of life with courage and grace. We dedicate this day and our reading to your glory, asking that our exploration of your word continues to change us for the better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Day 193, July 12, 2024, 365 Days Bible Reading, Old Testament, 2 Kings 23, 2 Kings 24, 1-7, New Testament, Romans 1, 1-17, Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 84, verse 1-7. Old Testament NIV version 2 Kings 23 1-37 Josiah renews the covenant when the king called together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He went up to the temple of the Lord with the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the prophets, all the people from the least to the great. He read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant which had been found in the temple of the Lord, the king stood by the pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord and keep his commands, statutes and decrees with all his heart and all his soul, thus confirming the words of the covenant written in this book. Then all the people pledged themselves to the covenant. The king ordered Hilkiah the high priest the priest next in rank and the doorkeepers to remove from the temple of the Lord all the articles made for Baal and Asherah and all the starry host. He burned them outside Jerusalem in the fields of the Kidron Valley and took the ashes to Bethel. He did away with the idolatrous priests appointed by the kings of Judah to burn incense on the high places of the towns of Judah and on those around Jerusalem. Those who burned incense to Baal, to the sun and moon, to the constellations, and to all the starry hosts. He took the Asherah pole from the temple of the Lord to the Kidron Valley outside Jerusalem and burned it there. He ground it to powder and scattered the dust over the graves of the common people. He also tore down the quarters of the male shrine prostitutes that were in the temple of the Lord, the quarters where women did weaving for Asherah. Josiah brought all the priests from the towns of Judah and desecrated the high places from Geba to Beersheba, where the priests had burnt incense. He broke down the gateway at the entrance of the gates of Joshua 
the city governor, which was on the left of the city gate. Although the priests of the high places did not serve at the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, they ate unleavened bread with their fellow priest. He desecrated Tophet, which was in the valley of Ben Hinnon, so no one could use it to sacrifice their son or daughter in the fire to Molech. He removed from the entrance to the temple of the Lord the horses that the kings of Judah had dedicated to the sun. They were in the courts near the room of an official named Nathan Melech. Josiah then burned the chariot dedicated to the sun. He pulled down the altars the kings of Judah had erected on the roof near the upper room of Ahaz and the altars Manasseh had built in the two courts of the temple of the Lord. He removed them from there, smashed them to pieces and threw the rubble into the Kidron Valley. The king also desecrated the high places that were east of Jerusalem on the south of the hill of corruption. The ones Solomon king of Israel had built for Ashtoreth, the vile goddess of the Sidonians, for Chemosh, the vile god of Moab, and for Molech, the detestable god of the people of Ammon. Josiah smashed the sacred stones and cut down the Asherah poles and covered the sides with human bones. Even the altar at Bethel, the high place, made by Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who had caused Israel to sin. Even that altar and high place he demolished. He burned the high place and ground it to powder and burned the Asherah pole also. Then Josiah looked around, and when he saw the tombs that were there on the hillside, he had the bones removed from them and burned on the altar to defile it. In accordance with the word of the Lord, proclaimed by the man of God who foretold these things, the king asked, What is that tombstone I see? The people of the city said, It marks the tomb of the man of God who came from Judah and pronounced against the altar of Bethel the very things you have done to it. Leave it alone, he said. Do not let anything, anyone disturb his bones. So they spared his bones and those of the prophets who had come from Samaria. Just as he had done at Bethel, Josiah removed all the shrines at the high places that the kings of Israel had built in the towns of Samaria and that had aroused the Lord's anger. Josiah slaughtered all the priests of those, the priests of those high places on the altars and burned human bones on them. Then he went back to Jerusalem. The king gave this order to all the people. Celebrate the Passover to the Lord your God as it is written in the book of the covenant. Neither in the days of the judges who led Israel, nor in the days of the kings of Israel. And the kings of Judah had any such Passover been observed. But in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, this Passover was celebrated to the Lord in Jerusalem. Furthermore, Josiah got rid of the mediums and spiritists, the household gods, the idols, and all the other detestable things seen in Judah and Jerusalem. This he did to fulfill the requirements of the law written in the book that Hilkiah the priest had discovered in the temple of the Lord. Neither before nor after Josiah was there a king like him who turned to the Lord as he did, with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his strength, in accordance with all the law of Moses. Nevertheless, the Lord did not turn away from the heat of his fierce anger, which burned against Judah because of all that Manasseh had done to arouse his anger. So the Lord said, I will remove Judah also from my presence as I removed Israel, and I will reject Jerusalem, the city I chose, and this temple about which I said my name shall be there. As for the other events of Josiah's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? While Josiah was king, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, went up to the Euphrates River to help the king of Assyria. King Josiah marched out to meet him in battle, but Necho faced him and killed him at Megiddo. Josiah's servant brought his body in a chariot from Megiddo to Jerusalem and buried him in his own tomb. And the people of the land took Jehoahaz, son of Josiah, 
and anointed him and made him king in the place of his father. Jehoahaz, king of Judah. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. His mother's name was Hamuta, daughter of Jeremiah. She was from Libna. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as his predecessors had done. Pharaoh Necho put him in chains at Riblah in the land of Hamath, so that he might not reign in Jerusalem. And he imposed on Judah a levy of a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim, son of Josiah, king in place of his father Josiah and changed Eliakim's name to Jehoiakim. But he took Jehoahaz and carried him off to Egypt, and there he died. Jehoiakim paid Pharaoh Necho the silver and gold he demanded. In order to do so, he taxed the land and exacted the silver and gold from the people of the land according to their assessments. Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. His mother's name was Zebida, daughter of Pediah. She was from Ruma, and he did evil in the eyes of the Lord just as his predecessors had done. Second Kings 24, 1-7 During Jehoiakim's reign, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, invaded the land and Jehoiakim became his vassal for three years. But then he turned against Nebuchadnezzar and rebelled. The Lord sent Babylonian, Aramean, Moabite and Ammonite raiders against him to destroy Judah in accordance with the word of the Lord proclaimed by his servants and prophets. Surely these things happened to Judah according to the Lord's command in order to remove them from his presence because of the sins of Manasseh and all he had done, including the shedding of innocent blood, for he had filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, and the Lord was not willing to forgive. As for the other events of Jehoiakim's reign, and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Jehoiakim rested with his ancestors, and Jehoiakim, his son, succeeded him as king. The king of Egypt did not march out from his own country again because the king of Babylon had taken all his territory from the wadi of Egypt to the Euphrates River. New Testament NIV version Romans 1 verse 1 to 17 Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, regarding his son, who, as to his earthly life, was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the Son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we received grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith for his name's sake. And you also are among those Gentiles who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all in Rome, who are loved by God and called to be his holy people. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul's longing to visit Rome. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your Father is being reported all over the world. Because your faith, rather, is being reported all over the world. God, whom I serve in my spirit, in preaching the gospel of his son is my witness how constantly i remember you in my prayers at all times and i pray that now at last by god's will the way may be opened for me to come to you i long to see you so that i may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong that is that you and i may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that I planned many times to come to you, but have been prevented from doing so until now.
in order that I might have a harvest among you just as I have had among the other Gentiles. I am obligated both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and to the foolish. This is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is a power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from the first to the last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 84, verse 1 to 7. For the director of music, according to the Gittite of the sons of Korah, a psalm. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! My soul yearns even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and a swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength, till each appears before God in Zion. Amen. Lessons learned from Second Kings 23 Importance of Comprehensive Reform King Josiah's extensive reforms, which included renewing the covenant, destroying idolatrous symbols, and restoring proper worship practices, underscore the importance of thorough spiritual renewal and commitment to God's commands. It shows that true reform requires decisive actions to remove all traces of ungodliness. Impact of Leadership on Spiritual Health Josiah's effects to efforts rather to lead Judah back to the worship of Yahweh demonstrate the powerful role leaders play in influencing the spiritual direction of a nation or community. Lessons learned from 2 Kings 24 verse 1 to 7 Consequences of National Sin Despite Josiah's reforms, the sins of his predecessors brought inevitable judgment upon Judah, leading to the Babylonian invasions. These illustrate how the repercussions of sin can extend beyond individual lifetimes, affecting future generations. Rise and Fall of Kings Under Divine Sovereignty the narrative details the rise of Nebuchadnezzar and the subjugation of Jehoiakim, showing that political power and national fate are ultimately under God's sovereign control. Lessons learned from Romans 1 verse 1 to 17, Power of the Gospel. Paul emphasizes the gospel's power to save everyone who believes, irrespective of their background, stressing that the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel from faith to faith. This highlights the universality and sufficiency of the gospel. Importance of faithful witnessing. Paul's eagerness to preach the gospel in Rome reflects the importance of sharing the message of Christ with all, showcasing a commitment to evangelism driven by the understanding of the gospel's power. Righteousness by faith. The declaration that the righteous shall live by faith sets the foundation for understanding Christian living and justification, emphasizing faith as the basis for righteousness. Lessons learned from Psalm 84 verse 1 to 7. Longing for God's presence. The psalm expresses a deep yearning for the presence of God, illustrating the soul's satisfaction found only in closeness to the divine. It serves as a reminder of the joy and peace that come from dwelling in God's presence. Blessings of trust in God. The passage highlights the blessings bestowed on those who trust in God and journey through life with Him as, his, as their strength. The Valley of Baca 
turns into a place of springs, metaphorically suggesting that hardships can be transformed into blessings when one is anchored in God. These passages collectively teach about the necessity of genuine spiritual renewal, the enduring impact of sin, the transformative power of the gospel, and the immense blessings and the joy found in living a life centered in God's presence and guided by faith. Faith declarations from 2 Kings 23 and 2 Kings 24, 1-7. I declare that I will lead with integrity and commit to comprehensive reforms in my life, removing anything that does not honor God. I recognize the impact of my actions on future generations, and I commit to living a life that fosters blessing rather than judgment. I affirm that God is sovereign over all leaders and nations, and I trust in His ultimate control over the events in my life and the world. Faith declarations from Romans 1 verse 1 to 17. I confess that I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is a power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. I believe in the righteousness of God that is revealed from faith to faith. I commit to living by faith, trusting that through faith I am justified before God. I am eager to share the gospel, understanding its power to transform lives, and I will actively seek opportunities to proclaim the truth of Jesus Christ to all. Faith Declarations from Psalm 84 verse 1 to 7 I declare my deep longing and desire for the presence of God, knowing that true joy and contentment are found in Him. I am blessed as I place my trust in God, finding strength in Him. As I pass through any challenges in life, I confess that even my valleys will be turned into springs as God's provision and strength make all things possible. I rejoice in being a dweller in God's house where I am always welcomed and cherished. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, if you were blessed by the scriptures and you will like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, Kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Congratulations if you said this prayer. We are so excited to welcome you to God's family. Kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is Salvation in Christ 101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Areleba. Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a blessing having you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.